Okay, here we are. Let's go through some of the basics of the solar system and beyond. In class, we'll have the opportunity to expand upon this and uh, learn about it in a lot more detail and really get to the deep questions that you guys have. So we're talking about uh, the solar system and other things. So here's a few questions for you to think about uh, before we start. You can pause the video here and uh, try to answer these questions in your notebook really quickly uh, before moving on. And if you still have questions about this, uh, we'll discuss it further in class. So why does the surface of the moon look bumpy? What is a black hole? Or what have you heard about a black hole? And uh, what do you think happens when you pass through one, if you can? And third one, there's a quick answer to this. You could look it up, but see if you can figure it out. Which is the closest star uh, to the planet Earth? Okay, which is the closest star to our home, planet Earth. And another cool video for you guys to check out, perhaps check it out now before you continue moving on. Um, Neil deGrasse Tyson is a very famous physicist and uh, he has this video called The Most Astounding Fact. So it's a good way to start looking at the entire uh, unit. So please check that out. Uh, ask a question, post it online if you have one. Lights in space, so we're just getting some basics out of the way. You probably know the answers to a lot of these, but let's just make sure we're all using the same vocabulary. So when you're looking up and you're seeing all those dots in the sky, you know, what are we looking at? Mostly, most of you would probably say there's some stars, but actually a lot of those are actually planets as well. And now on the iPhone or iPad or other types of phones, there's these little, there's cool little applications that you can actually point up at the sky and it'll actually look like a window you're looking through. And as you're moving this, uh, your, your phone around, you can actually identify what the little dots are in the sky. And it has the names on them. It's really easy. And you can find out that some of them are actually uh, planets. So uh, why can we see those? That's one thing to th think about as well, too. Uh, some of them are satellites, man-made satellites. And there's apps on the phone to actually find out where these satellites are and you can see them moving through the sky uh, if you're in the right place at the right time as well too. You might think they're planes at first but they're moving a little too fast and in weird angles to be planes and also they're probably moving too slow to be what you think are uh, shooting stars which are not actually stars they're actually uh, either bits of rock or ice comets or asteroids. Uh, fireflies hopefully you can tell the difference between fireflies and uh, stars. We call each of the different objects in space uh, bodies. So stars, planets, man-made satellites, they're all called uh, bodies out there. Um, a star is very specific in that it gives out its own light. And the word that means gives out its own light is luminous. So even though Justin Bieber may be a star to you or One Direction may be considered stars, they don't give off their own light. So you turn off all the lights and you can't actually see them. So uh, stars are luminous. Planets are not luminous, but we can see them because the light is reflecting off of them from other stars and other sources of light. So be careful about that. No problem. So stars are exploding all the time. There's a lot of chemical reactions happening in there. So that's producing a lot of the light and the energy. Um, Planets are not luminous, we said that. Moons are also not luminous, so how come I can see the moon at night? It looks like it's glowing. Well, it depends on how the sun is reaching it, how the light from the sun is reaching it, and how it's reflecting and then coming back, and then we'll be able to see uh, the light that's bouncing off of the moon as a result, so be careful about that as well too. Um, planets in our solar system, giant lumps of rock or balls of gas, they do not give off light. We see them because, and then hopefully you should be able to answer that. Fireflies, even though they're not even related to this unit, I just put that in there to try to mess with you. Fireflies, they do give off their own light, so they are luminous, but they're not on the same scale as uh, stars, of course. All right, the moon, very famous, lots of images of the moon, lots of stories about the moon, lots of... Uh, Lots of tales of why the moon looks the way it does. People say they see a face of the moon. There's all kinds of things that the moon conjures up, including werewolves. It's great in stories and everything like that. Uh, the moon is the closest body in space to the Earth, and it orbits Earth, and therefore we call it a satellite. 
But the, what about the satellites that we make that send us our TV signals? Well, those are also satellites because they orbit the Earth, but they're man-made, so we call them man-made satellites. And by now you should know that the moon does not give off any light. The word lunar means anything to do with the moon. So some people follow a lunar calendar. That means they're following a calendar where they're looking at how the moon changes. And that's coming up next, phases of the moon. And they use that to determine uh, a calendar. Here's a, various, here's a diagram showing the different phases of the moon. Uh, you should get this down. There's a few new vocabulary words in here. Waxing and waning and gibbous crescent quarter, new moon, full moon. I think you probably know what the full moon is. Uh, in horror stories, that's when the werewolf, when the man turns into a werewolf and stuff like that. But hopefully you know that's science fiction and it's not something that's real unless you know something different. Okay, so the moon goes through this cycle, right? We go from full moon uh, and then it starts to change over the course of approximately 28 days or so. And then when we say there's a new moon, that's when you can't see the moon in the sky. Um, hopefully you know, you should be able to figure out that it's not because bits of the moon are being chopped off or the moon's like getting smaller and getting bigger. It all depends on the angle that the light, that the sunlight is actually hitting. So in this diagram, you can see the sunlight's coming from the right in this case. And depending on where the moon is in relation to the earth and where you are on the earth you have a different view of what's happening when the moon actually comes around so be careful uh, about that okay easy question is the sun or the moon bigger did you say moon no you didn't you said the sun the sun is bigger but they actually look like they're about the same size when i compare them in the sky but of course you shouldn't be staring directly at the sun or bad things will happen like you'll go blind okay too much energy too much light it's going to damage your retina at the back of your eyeball and uh that's not good okay some people would get confused about the sizes well you should know which one's closer which one's further right the sun is a lot 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 larger but it's also a lot further compared to the moon. And so from our perspective, it looks like they're about the same size. So it's a simple question, but make sure uh, you fully understand that. And two things that uh, we've been able to observe uh, recently, solar eclipses and lunar eclipses. And the only difference is the arrangement of the sun, the earth, and the moon in what order we're talking about when they line up and what we get to see. Uh, a solar eclipse is much more grand, in my opinion, because when that happens, what's happening here, if you look at this diagram, is here's the Earth, and if I'm looking, and I'm standing here at the, uh, the, uh, this part of the world, a solar eclipse is when the moon directly blocks the sunlight, okay, so di directly blocks the path of the sun. And because, even though this thing is huge, because uh, they, are, they look like they're relatively the same size of the sky, the moon just blocks out the sun like, like this and basically will block out the light. So if, you're, if this happens to happen uh, during the daytime, the sky will get dark as the moon passes directly in front of the sun. So that's a very grand image. Uh, a lunar eclipse is a different arrangement, but it's where the Earth is between the sun and the moon. And then what happens is when you look at the moon, when you're on this, this side right here and you're looking at the moon, uh, the moon doesn't disappear completely because the light rays that are passing through the Earth, Earth's atmosphere uh, are still able to bend and reach the moon, but it's red shifted in a sense. So that's why the moon gets this uh, kind of orangey reddish glow. So solar eclipse and lunar eclipse. Sketch some quick diagrams in your notes for that one. A few other things about the moon. Uh, lunar month, I mentioned previously, about 28 days to orbit the Earth. When it starts, we call it a new moon. Uh, when the crescent, this crescent starts to get larger, we're saying that it waxes. I know that's a weird word. I don't figure out a way to help you remember that. So as this crescent looks like it's getting larger, we say the moon is waxing. When, it's, uh, when we can see the full sphere, we call it the full moon, and when this starts to disappear, we say, uh, or 
turn back towards the crescent, we say the moon is waning, wanes, wane. W a n e, not like a baby way of saying rain. Okay, wane. W a n e, and the new moon is when it seems to disappear. These are the phases of the moon, and here's a wolf, because that's what a lot of us think of. If you read vampire stories, vampires aren't real. Okay, the solar system. I think this is the last thing of the basics to make sure you have the basic knowledge. Uh, my very easy method just speeds up naming planets. Repeat that to yourself five times. Go. Okay. What you've just done is you've memorized a very easy method that speeds up. Oops. You've memorized a very easy method that just speeds up naming planets because that sentence right there gives you the first letter of all the planets in order from the sun. Now, Pluto might change a little bit because of the new uh, dwarf planet category it fits into. But Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars are called rocky planets. So look at this. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. My very easy method. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and what was previously called a planet, Pluto. But a lot of scientists got together and said, you know what, the size, the orbit, it just doesn't seem to fit. Let's just call it a... Uh, dwarf planet. It still does orbit the sun, um, but maybe its size, we can't really categorize it, blah, 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 blah. So we end up with that. Okay. So these ones, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, are large balls of gas. And the main asteroid belt is between Mars and Jupiter. So uh, going beyond the solar system, really quick, the sun that is closest to the star. The sun, sorry, the sun is the closest star to us, so it appears the brightest. So in the warm-up, I asked you a question, what is the star that's closest? So you're looking out at the night sky, looking at all those stars, trying to name which one it is. Um, it's actually the closest star, it's a trick question, the closest star is actually our own sun. Okay. The next closest star is 4.2 light years away. That's very long distance. That means if I could travel at the speed of light, and in one second, if I could travel at the speed of light, remember, if I just started running straight like this, at the speed of light, as fast as light can travel, in one second, I would be around the Earth, okay, seven and a half times. So let's assume, even if I could travel that fast in one second, circle the Earth seven and a half times, if I was traveling that fast and flying that fast towards the next closest star besides the sun, it would take me 4.2 years to get there. That just shows you exactly how far it is. What if I try to get to the sun, just to our sun? Well, if I could travel at the speed of light, traveling towards the sun, it would still take me about eight minutes to get there. So what does that mean about the actual sun? That means if the sun were to disappear right now, we wouldn't know until eight minutes later. And then all of a sudden, it'd be gone. And then we'd all be panicking because it'd be dark and nighttime. Plants wouldn't be able to survive. Anyways, there's a whole, there's a cool video on uh, YouTube uh, that you should check out. So I'll link that for you guys. Last couple things. Galaxy is a group of millions of stars and we are in the Milky Way. Our local galaxy is the Milky Way. And the universe is basically the whole of everything. It's pretty hard to imagine how big it is. So we're going to be discussing that in class. So the universe contains millions of galaxies. Each one of those galaxies could Galaxies could contain millions or billions of stars, and these galaxies are all spread out. But some galaxies are chunked together into super clusters. But the bottom line is the universe is a pretty big place. And until you are able to grasp that scale, you don't really realize exactly how small uh, we are on this planet Earth and everything. So this is what I, some of the information I just gave you, close to star. We think the universe is approximately 92 billion light years across. That means if I were traveling at the speed of light from one edge of the solar system to the other edge, that it would still take me 92 billion years. <sighs> okay, that's it. So hopefully you, have, hopefully you have some understanding of the basics of this unit. And uh, let's get into the details in class. All right. Thank you very much.